Hi guys, I wanted to do a quick disclaimer before we start the next video all about my mistakes in my 20s. I just want to note that I did not look in the camera lens while filming this video because it was my first time filming on my iPhone in my room by myself so I didn't know what I was doing. It's another mistake to add to the list of mistakes that I make every single day but um, I just want to put a quick disclaimer so you guys know that's why I'm not making eye contact but I hope you enjoy this video and I definitely learned my lesson so enjoy i love you guys so much Mwah. hi guys welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be doing a video from my bedroom i just thought that let's switch it up and try something new and bring you guys a little bit more intimate into my personal space and today we're actually going to be talking about something quite different and we're going to be talking about all my mistakes i made in my 20s so I was chatting with one of our executive coaches and life coaches, Kira Jean, big shout out to her. And we were chatting about the importance of getting vulnerable and sharing your mistakes and, and speaking about them just as much as you speak about your wins because truthfully, we can all learn from each other's mistakes even more than we can learn from each other's successes or our, you know, our wins that we have. So today's video is gonna be dedicated to sharing my mistakes that I've made. And hopefully we're gonna make this into a series where I talk about different types of mistakes that I've had throughout different areas of my life, whether it's relationships, work, business, family, personal mistakes, financial mistakes, health mistakes, there's so many. So hopefully this will be something that we can do very regularly because there's a lot and they happen all the time. It's not something that's going to go away. It's a part of life. We all make mistakes and it's something that we need to get comfortable with and we need to be confident enough to share what we've done wrong. And there's, it's totally okay. It's human. And when you share your mistakes, you give people the permission to share theirs as well. And it makes it a, a more open space where people are just more honest with each other. And I think it's really important in business and in a team, but also personally, amongst yourselves with your friends, your family, and everybody that's close to you. So before we get started, I just want to remind you guys to like this video if you've enjoyed it and to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. We're building such an amazing community of loving, amazing, incredible, kind people. So I'm really happy to have you all on this channel and thank you so much. So the first mistake I'd like to share, which you've probably heard me say repeatedly, is not starting therapy earlier on in my life and I'm um, working with people like life coaches, therapists, and mentors a lot more closely and openly and just being more vulnerable. So I personally always wanted to do therapy. I was like that person who was like undercover, like wanting it so bad, but I always had this like hesitation because of the thought of being vulnerable with someone and sharing you know, my problems was scary. I've always been the person who listens to other people's problems rather than share my own. So I just always had that kind of like that blockage towards opening up to someone. So I'd always be like, no, 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 I'm okay, I'm good. But finally, in my 30s, I did go to therapy kind of through the persuasion of somebody else. It was my ex at the time and it was like the best thing ever. It was like really weird to open up to somebody. But after that, it was kind of like, you know, it was just like, you know, once you pop, you can't stop. Then I couldn't stop with the therapy. It became my new obsession and it still is my obsession. I love therapy so much and I love just developing myself in many areas of my life. So I really advise to you guys start the therapy early on, start getting the work, counseling, whatever it is, life coaching. Start it early on. This is so important. And developing yourself has the biggest return on investment than anything else more than your education more than doing any courses more than investing in the stock market more than investing in anything like more than investing in a business like developing in yourself and improving all the areas that you need to work on will have the highest return trust me and again i wish i started it earlier on i can't imagine the amount of mistakes i could have avoided if i started the work earlier on in my life and how much more content i would be Again, no regrets because we're all where we are for a reason, but I just think that there were so many things I could have avoided if I would have started that work earlier on. So that's number one, start the therapy earlier on. In your 20s, start it young. There's no reason to hold back. Number two, the second thing that I wish I did in my 20s, and to be honest, even earlier than that, I wish I did this as a teenager, cut off friends who gossip. And you don't necessarily need to cut them off, but let them know that you're not going to be a part of that part of their lives. You do not need to surround yourself with people who talk about other people. This is one of the most time consuming waste of your time. It's such a poor use of your time talking about other people and people who talk about other people. It's toxic, it's draining, it's bad karma. 
it's a sin in my religion. It's it, there's no good use of talking about other people. And I remember, you know, I've, it's never been in my nature to gossip. My mom has always been so against gossip, but I remember like I had a lot of friends who gossiped growing up. It was just kind of normal. And I remember just feeling like so drained after sitting with them talking about other people and like feeling so toxic and just feeling dirty. I'd also just feel awful. And I, I was like, why am I not speaking up about this? Why do I not just tell them like, listen, love you. We're great friends. I wish you the best, but when you're around me, I don't want to talk about other people. I didn't have, you know, I didn't have enough courage to just speak my mind. And I wish I did earlier on. I actually cut off a lot of people who had that, you know, behavior and who talked about people all the time. I just ended up cutting them off. I could have saved friendships if I would have just told them straight up, like, don't gossip in front of me. I don't like it. I don't appreciate it. But you know, this is something I advise to you guys because people who gossip a lot, they're probably gossiping about you too. And that's another reason why I cut most of them off because I found out they were talking about me too. And I was like, oh, just like, what is just... To cut these kind of people out of your life, cut this kind of scenario out of your life. If you're doing it yourself, stop it. It's a waste of your time. Like there's a quote, I can't remember exactly how it was said, but it was like, you know, small minds talk about people. Big minds talk about situations or something like that. And then like big mind, like the best minds talk about ideas, like focus on ideas, focus on ideas or yourself. You know, if you're not thinking about big ideas, at least think about yourself and how you can improve and keep your business on your business. You should not be focusing on anybody else's business, but your own. If you're thinking about other people, it means you're clearly not thinking about yourself enough to develop who you are. So please follow my advice. Just cut it out and stand your ground. Look, you don't need to be around that kind of energy. And again, if you're doing it yourself, just just try to put, you know, try to be disciplined and put a target of say, I'm not gonna talk crap about anybody for five days, seven days, make it a challenge. And like, when you feel like you wanna say something bad about someone, just force yourself to say something good about that person or change the subject to someone who you do wanna say something good about. You don't have to fake it, but don't talk crap about people. It's such a bad, petty waste of your time. Gossip is so unnecessary and yeah, I'm not gonna keep going on this because I could talk about it forever. So another mistake I made in my 20s and to be honest, up until very recently, is just not saying no enough um, because I was putting people's feelings ahead of my own. And this came down to, you know, jumping into serious relationships without getting to know people, jumping into working with people just because I had one meeting with them. I would always feel obliged to not kind of shop around. So I think date around when it comes to relationships, get to know what you like, but also at work. Like if you are looking for a creative agency, meet three or four creative agencies. If you're looking for a job, do a whole bunch of interviews. You don't have to like say yes to the first offer you get. You know, this is something that I feel like I always felt like I had to say yes to everything because I was putting other people's feelings first. I thought, oh, if I've taken someone's time, I must, you know, give them something back. And I, I always felt kind of guilty and I put other people first. So put yourself first to an extent. Don't be the complete opposite and only put yourself first because, you know, you don't want to be a narcissist. You don't want to be somebody who's selfish. You know, be in the middle, like balance is everything. I was the whole other extreme. I was always putting other people's feelings first, putting myself last, which is also wrong. So you don't want to be here or there. You want to kind of be in the middle. And I think that's really important when in every area. So when it comes to dating, finding the right people to work with, friends, like every single area, shop around, do your, do your research. Your 20s are made for that. Your 20s are made for you to experience things and to get to know yourself and to, to figure out what you want. And if you haven't done it in your 20s, don't feel bad. Do it in your 30s, your 40s, your 50s. It's never too late. Just get it done. Don't feel like the pressure to to commit to anything before knowing what you like. So another huge mistake I made in my 20s, which I really regret so badly and I'm still paying for it, was letting go of my health. So from from being a teenager from the age of 14 until I graduated university when I was like 23, I was obsessed with my health. Like I was really always in the gym. I mean, I had moments where I'd let it go for a couple months, six months maximum. But overall, for like 10 years of my life, I was obsessed with working out. I was obsessed with my health. I was, you know, I was I was trying to take good care of myself all the time, even though I did it the wrong ways when I was younger. But when I graduated university and I got into the working world, I completely let myself go for around 10 years. Like, yeah, I'd say 10 years from the age of 23 to 33. 
I completely let myself go. I don't know what happened. I really, really, really just started eating whatever I wanted. I started not eating properly. A lot of times I wasn't eating enough, but then I would binge eat because I was starving. I was just really not taking care of my wellness. I, did, I stopped working out properly. Like I didn't have a schedule. And this is something really important because you really do pay the price in the future. And I know that sounds like a bit like, I don't know, old lady-ish of me, but truthfully you do. If you don't, I wish I took as much care of myself in my twenties as I'm taking now. Like now, you know, even though I still have my cycles of like being more dedicated or not, I'm still overall, like I take care of myself. I take, you know, I take care of my sleep. I sleep on time. I try to sleep well. I take my supplements. I try to train at least four or five times a week. I try to stay active. I try to eat well 80% of the time, 20%. I like give myself the room to, to indulge, but you know, overall I'm, I'm, I'm conscious of my wellness. And I think that's something that's so important. You know, your health is the one thing you really can't buy, you know, health in your time. But like, these are things that you really need to do yourself and no one can do it for you, but you. So please, please, please try to take care of your health. Remember, it's something that, you know, without it, you really do have nothing like, you know, health is wealth. You know, that quote cannot be said enough. Also, try to stay away from things like smoking, alcohol, all these kind of like really, really unbeneficial habits that a lot of people do pick up in their 20s. I mean, I went through a period, believe it or not, where I was socially smoking. And I, I can't even believe I'm saying this, but like it, it actually even became a little bit of a habit at one point. And I was actually surprised with myself when I realized, okay, it's been like a year now that I've been doing this. And then when I got into my wellness journey, I was like, that's it. I just quit cold turkey and I've never looked back. And honestly, it's again, something that, you know, we start, we think it's no big deal, but really it's a big deal. Like your health is everything. Do not let these things creep up on you because if you start in your twenties, if you don't find a reason to quit, you're probably going to continue doing these things in your forties, your fifties, your sixties. And yeah, just imagine the path you're going on in life. If you have like a really healthy path or a non-healthy path and like where you're going to be after you like multiply the effects over years of time. You know, it's not about doing it for a year, it's about doing it for 10 years and time flies. And most of the time, it's really hard to break habits. So create healthy habits in your 20s and you're gonna set yourself up for life. Another thing that I'd like to share with you guys, and I know I've said this repeatedly in so many videos and I'll probably continue saying it because repetition is recognition, but you really do need to trust your gut. This is something that I probably really stopped doing in my 20s. You know, that was kind of like the years where I was like numbing my emotions, numbing my feelings, because I was like, I put my feelings aside so I could just focus on work and like to really just be as productive as possible. But truthfully, your feelings are your compass. Your feelings are your compass. And I'm gonna repeat that all the time. I might drive you guys crazy, but I just want you to get it into your head that your feelings really do kind of guide you to where you need to go. There's something there telling you what you need to do in life. So don't disconnect yourself from your feelings. Pay attention to red flags and trust your gut. Your gut, in my opinion, and I've heard this through different podcasts that I've listened to, and I really agree with this theory, but it's it's really like accumulation of intelligence that your subconscious picks up when you can't pick it up yourself. So your your mind is always listening to everything else and like things that we don't take in consciously go into our subconscious and that's when your gut speaks to you so tune in get connected find ways to really connect yourself with your emotions and pay attention all your answers are already within yourself trust me if you pay attention and you connect you're gonna find guidance to every single kind of problem that you have and for the last mistake I kind of made or we all make I guess I would say don't compare yourself with anyone else and this comes in many forms whether it's career wise whether it's like progression in any specific area of your life for me it was always like because I had so many failed relationships you know I mean I don't want to call them failures but yeah they didn't lead to what I wanted which was like marriage I would always be like why am I not finding the right person and I'd always kind of like feel upset about that until I hit 30 and then I was like, screw this, I'm gonna take my time and I'm, I'm gonna do what I need to do to find the right person. But before I hit 30, I'd always feel so much pressure on finding the right person and starting a family because I really wanted that. But I realized like you can't compare yourself. Comparison 
is the thief of joy and you really shouldn't compare any area, whether it's like your career, your finances, your personal life, your relationships, your, your, your everything, you know, your health, your beauty, whatever it is, like don't compare yourself to anybody else, compare yourself to yourself and really try to learn from yourself. So if you feel like there's an area where you are comparing yourself to other people, pay attention to that because that's telling you what you're looking for in life. So if you feel any sort of, you know, if you feel bad about a specific area, you know, that means that you need, you're craving that area. So work on it and find a plan and figure out like, what are people doing differently to what you're doing or what have you done repeatedly and like, what pattern do you need to change? Don't compare, but when you do feel yourself wanting to compare, pay attention to that so you can figure out like what areas you need to focus on and and change and dedicate to yourself so that you do feel better in all the areas of your life. And look, in the end of the day, I don't think happiness is something that we can feel all the time, but we can feel content if we try to fill all the different categories of our life. So it's all about being content and having harmony. So I try my best to, to see which areas I'm feeling better or worse at at all times. So it's all about just checking in with yourself, keeping yourself in check, and just being honest with yourself and your emotions and your feelings. And Again, they really are your guiding compass. They tell you what you need to do. They give you the answers. So pay attention to them. Don't deny your feelings. So anyways, these were my main mistakes that I made in my 20s. There's still like a thousand others and I'm gonna prepare a whole bunch for you guys if you enjoyed this series. Please let me know, comment down below if you wanna see more of this so I start working on more for you guys because I have a lot of topics in mind. Financial mistakes, relationship mistakes, business mistakes, career mistakes, family mistakes, friendship mistakes. Like there's so many when I think about it. And shout out again to Kira for, for highlighting this to me because I was like, you know what, when she said this, I was like, really, we should be talking about our mistakes more so everybody can learn together. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, I'm gonna end this video with a quote of the day. Quote of the day from this amazing book called Be Strong. It says, if you make friends with yourself, you will never be alone from Maxwell Maltz. And that is so true. Again, another thing that I, I, I think you guys should all be doing early on in your life. And again, if, it's, if you haven't done it yet, no worries. Do it in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, whatever, whatever age you are. It's never too early or too late to do the right thing, but become friends with yourself. Get to know yourself and make yourself the biggest priority. Like, I think when we are younger, we try to spend our time getting to know other people or like feeling like a part of a, a circle and it's natural, it's a human need to feel like you're a part of something, but Detach from that and just try to get to know who you are first and make that a priority. The sooner you do it, the better, the more you're gonna improve all the areas of your life. So yeah, this is, um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It's a little bit different, it's in my room. I'm getting a little bit more intimate with you guys, but I hope you enjoyed it and let me know, comment down below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I love you guys so much, bye.